Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to talk about communication skills again. And our topic is listening. But today we are going to learn how to become an effective listener. This is a very serious problem. Normally, people are good speakers. They always like to speak, but there are less number of people who have the capability of listening to other people in patience. Usually people have less capacity to listen to other people's point of view. So we have to understand how can we become an effective or useful listener. First, we are going to understand our first point, our first technique that we should keep in our mind is that we should learn to concentrate on the message. Always remember, whenever you are listening, you should be patient enough to listen to other person's point of view. It is normally said that people normally speak at 100 to 200 words a minute. Means if someone is speaking, he will be using 100 to 200 words in a minute. But on the other hand, person's listening capacity, listening power is more. Like any listener can be capable of hearing up to 500 words a minute. See, there is a huge difference between your speaking power, speaking average, and your listening average per minute. So because of this mismatch between speaking and listening speeds makes it necessary for people to concentrate diligently in order to listen effectively. You have to put a serious mental effort to understand what the person is saying. You have to concentrate on the words of the speaker because you will be hearing so many voices, so many things will be uh, going around you. So your focus must be the words of the listener. So there are different techniques. How can we become or how can we make or how can we concentrate on the message effectively? This one technique is that in mind, whatever you are listening, whatever you are listening, you have to summarize it in your mind. This technique becomes useful when the person is speaking with low speed. He, his ideas are not well organized. He is taking time for thinking and then producing his ideas. So there you can do this thing. You can summarize the message mentally. Then what we should do more, you should concentrate on the main points the speaker is trying to convey. So you need to understand the topic, what topic the person is speaking on. So then you have to find out what are relevant, necessary, key ideas that the person can convey to you. There's another point, see, when the person is speaking, he can give you a direct message and he can also use indirect message. Like whatever he's saying, there are chances that between the lines, the meaning is different. So you must know to understand the meaning between the lines. That is, you have to look for hidden message. 
whatever the person is saying, is he having some hidden message in it? It is also called deduction. Determine whether the speaker is giving you facts and figures, whether whatever he's saying is his or her own opinion, or he has deduced, or he has taken this meaning from somewhere else. And remember, there are personalities which or who can dominate you through their personality, their, through their physical appearance, or their vocal quality is excellent that you are mesmerized. So remember, do not allow the speaker's physical appearance or vocal qualities to affect your concentration. Your concentration should be on words, should not be on the person's accent, on the person's physical personality. So focusing on the message will assist you in overcoming barriers that may interfere with you hearing the enti entire message. So remember, the key success, the key to become an effective listener is to concentrate, learn to concentrate, give due respect to the speaker and try to avoid, try to block all other things other than the speaker's words. Okay, after concentrating on the message, we are going to follow second technique. What is it? To determine the purpose of the message. Remember, we have previously discussed in different topics that whenever you are communicating, you have to decide the purpose of your communication. Why are you communicating? Either you are speaking, you are listening, or you are writing, or even you are reading. For all these four skills, remember you need to determine the reason of the message. Why are you communicating? So here, your major purpose is to listen. So you need to understand why you are listening to these words or to this certain person, to this certain speech. So when you decide the reason of your listening, you will be easily decide what way, what method, what mode you can use for listening. If we divide different modes of listening, there are three in number. Number one is cautious listening. Number two is called skimming. That is also used in reading. And number three is scanning. So now we discuss them one by one. First one is cautious listening. When we need to be cautious. What do we mean by cautious? Cautious means in general words that where you have to focus each and every point of the speaker. So this mode is used when you need to understand and remember both the general concept of the message and the relevant details of the message. Always remember whenever you are listening there will be two different components or different parts of the message. One will be general concept and the other one be details or relevant details of that journal concept. Sometimes you have to focus on only on general concept and sometimes you have to focus on the whole detail and sometimes you have to focus on both. So remember, when you have to focus on both, you have to understand the general concept as well as you have to understand the re relevant whole details of the message. You have to focus, you have to use 
one mode that is called cautious listening. This mode requires more energy because you need to focus on each and every word of the speaker. The message will be maybe more complex. So you have to put more mental effort, more mental effort to concentrate on such kind of mode. So when listening in this mode, your mind has no time to relax. You cannot look here and there. You cannot focus on some other thing or some uh, other ideas. No, in cautious listening, you are going to focus 100% on the message of the speaker. So it is more difficult. It is. It requires more hard work. It requires more concentration. Now we see the second mode that is called skimming. Why do we do skimming? It is used when you need to understand only the general concept of the message. You are not, you need not to focus on each and every word because you need a general concept. You need not all relevant details of the message. So here you can be a little bit relaxed. Here the concentration for listening the message may be a little bit less. So when using this mode for listening, your mind has time to relax because you do not need to remember all the details being presented. Your mind can be relaxed. You can relax your mind. Think of your mind as a computer. The amount of storage is vast but not limitless. So cluttering your mind with insignificant matter causes it to tire, which would cause you to forget the important points. So remember, be active. Whatever you are doing, either it is cautious listening or skimming, or obviously in skimming, you may, uh, you need not focus or concentrate as you have to concentrate when you are doing cautious listening. The third one is scanning. So it is the easiest mode because you need to get only a specific piece of information from the whole message of the, of the speaker. You can take example of it. Normally when budget is announced, salaried class focuses on only that part of the budget speech that is related to the decision pertinent to their salary increase. So they don't listen to the whole budget. They sit, they do each and everything. They focus on other things, but they keep on waiting for the one word or one statement that when or how much their salaries are increased. So in scanning, you concentrate on details of specific interest to you instead of on the message's general concept. So in this mode, no energy is wasting. You need no energy to focus. You need no energy to retain information. You just need to focus on the important or valued information of your own interest. So one shortcoming is in using this method or mode is that your, may, my, your mind may wander here and there, and there is a chance that you miss that important or relevant point of your own interest. So remember, listening should always be very careful. Okay, dear. After discussing two effective techniques to become an effective listener, we are going to move to the third one, that is keep an open mind. That is very important point to become a very effective listener because 
every person has his or her own biases, his or her own interest, his or her own likings or disliking, his or her own mental or emotional attachments or detach detachments with different people. So what normally people do, they see who is speaking. They don't say what is being spoken, what is being said. They see what is their mental or emotional relationship with that person. If you like that person, whatever he is or she is saying, you will accept it. But if you don't like that person on political basis, on other uh, your emotional feelings, what you are going to do, you are going to close your mind. You are going to freeze your mind. You will make one decision in your mind that whatever he is saying, he is not saying correctly or he is uh, saying in biased manner or he is not telling us the truth. That is That thing is commonly used when we talk about politics. If you like the politician, whatever he's saying, you say, okay, he's doing the marvelous thing. Whatever he's saying is the best thing. And if your opponent is speaking on television, what you are going to do, you will make up your, again, you are going to make up your mind in negative way. You will not focus on what, you, what he is saying. So remember, when you don't keep your mind open, you will be a biased listener. You will never ever come to analyze the message. You will never ever come to understand what is being said because you have frozen your mind. You have let your feelings, your biases, your interest to overcome your, to block or over to block your understanding. Because when your mind is frozen, you will never understand. You will make up your mind before the person finishes his or her uh, speech or a press conference or whatever he's or she is doing. He might be a motivational speaker. Uh, you may like him or her. You may not be liking him or her. So always remember, keep your biases away and keep your mind open, give due respect to your speaker because speaker is whatever he's saying, he's saying for you. So you should give him or her respect. Never do this thing. Never ever make up your mind first before the person finishes his or her speech. So remember, this thing uh, creates problems. So always remember that you have to keep your mind open. You have to keep your mind open from all biases. Then you will become a neutral, good, effective listener. Fourth important technique to become an effective listener is to use feedback. What is feedback? Feedback is your response to the speaker. Remember, your positive response, your positive feedback can give enormous energy to the speaker. He will speak more. He or she will uh, try his or her best to share his maximum honest knowledge with you. So what you should do, what you should do, what you can do to give a positive feedback. Number one, try to give eye contact to the speaker. Try to uh, look at him or her. Second thing is try to sit in a positive, active posture. And number three is try to share a smile with him or her. You should have a smiling face. Number four is that you should nod your head. There should be your movement of your head. 
that you are focusing on him or her you are listening to him or her and the most important thing is that ask questions like tell me about this tell me more about this what is your opinion about this point of view uh, how can we uh, achieve this goal but remember when you ask questions questions should be for the sake of encouraging the speaker it should not be for the sake of disrupting him or her or creating problem for him or her try to give due positive respect to your speaker there are certain situations where you cannot give feedback to your speaker like uh, if he's on tv or if he's on radio right otherwise whenever you are speaking to you are listening to someone in class in conference room wherever try to give him or her positive feedback after using feedback we are going to move to next technique and that technique is minimize note taking always remember when you are listening to any speaker obviously your main purpose is to retain that information in your mind normally it doesn't happen that you can keep each and every point verbally in your mind to retain the message you have to take notes now the question is how you take notes can you uh, write each and every word said by the speaker i think it's not possible if you try to write each and every word of the speaker it is impossible to catch him or her so what you should do yes you should try to minimize note taking what do you mean what do we mean by minimizing note taking it doesn't mean that you are uh, writing one or two or three points and uh, leaving other points no it is the way how you take notes you should not take each and every word you should not write notes in complete sentences rather you should try to take notes in points always remember judge what are the key words what are the key ideas and then write them in points don't write them in complete sentences after minimizing note taking technique we are going to move to the next technique and this is analyze the total message what does it mean it means that in speaking analyzing the message is different as compared to analyzing the message that is in written form because in writing these are only words that you can read that you can see that you can observe but here you are observing the words you are listening to the words of the speaker as well as analyzing the facial expressions body language and uh, the way of talking of the speaker because if someone you have to see the intonation of the speaker how he is uh, in rising or falling his voice on what words he is stressing what kind of tone he has is he uh, using harsh tone or uh, he has the tone that shows some kind of uh, uh, cynicism or uh, some sort of uh, ir irony or uh, his or her tone shows that uh, he is in very uh, friendly or pleasant mode so judging the tone of the speaker also helps you understand the message other than this again 
you have to see the facial expressions. What kind of facial expressions the speaker has on, on his or her face? Is he, uh, has, does he have a solemn face? Does he or she has uh, uh, a smile on his face? Uh, do you think that uh, he has or she has some uh, uh, anger on his face? So all this also show uh, something to understand. Similarly, the, the movement of uh, body, even how the per speaker is standing, how the person is sitting. So each and everything should be analyzed. If you are capable of doing this, you can understand the total intent of the speaker. So understanding the intention of the speaker can not be done without analyzing his tone, his body language, his facial expressions, his posture, and everything. Last technique that we are going to consider is that you should not talk or interrupt when the speaker is conversating, when the speaker is delivering his speech or her speech, or even he is having conversation. When we talk about courtesy, remember that some, when someone is talking, it is discourteous that you talk during his speech or during his conversation, or you interrupt him or her uh, when he is, or she is talking. The best way is that you have to sit silently and you should not interrupt. You should wait for the speaker to finish his conversation or her conversation. And then you should ask question by permission. Don't ask question without seeking permission. And the question should be a relevant, positive one, and should not be for the sake of questioning or the sake of uh, humiliating your speaker. It should be for the sake of understanding that, yes, I want to understand this point. I'm unable to understand it. And second thing is, when you talk, when someone is speaking, it also shows that you are giving, you're not giving him or her the due respect. And when you talk, obviously, it is impossible for you to focus on the speaker's words. So always remember, it is not possible that you are talkative as well as a very good person to listen or understand something. Because when you talk, obviously, you lose your focus, you lose your concentration. So remember, never talk during someone's speech or someone's con conversation and never interrupt him or her. Always remember that there can be pauses during conversation. So you should understand either it is a, a pause or it is the pause for the end of the presentation or conversation. I hope that these seven techniques will help you to become a very good, effective listener and you will become a very good professional in your life.